Welcome to HeCast, the official podcast of He Changed It. My name is Mike Chisholm. Uh, I'm a broken record. Whenever we start these things, I talk about how excited I am to be here. Today, still the same, still excited to be here. I love doing this. It's a highlight of my week. Uh, I really enjoy talking to people in the world uh, about men's wellness, men's mental wellness, the things that are happening uh, within that world. And uh, the people that are around, they're actually doing things to make a difference. Um, and and today, is, uh, today is, is definitely along that lines. We're going to talk to somebody who uh, is uh, endeavoring to make this world a better place uh, in the world of, of mental wellness in a, in a very specific niche market. First and foremost, if you haven't downloaded He Changed It, what have you been waiting for? For. It is in the app stores right now. Um, is a it's a it's a, a fraction of what it's going to be, but it's there, and you can jump in. The communities are hopping. There's lots of resources that are happening within. He changed it. If you haven't subscribed yet to the podcast, please do. If you have, please share it uh, with everyone you know. And let's get this movement rolling. We are taking back the phrase "man up," and it is so exciting to be part of this. He changed it movement. Uh, I'm so grateful to be part of it, and I'm grateful for the people I get to talk to. Today, we're going to talk to a gal by the name of Rhonda Sachuk. Rhonda is um, a safety officer in a world that, you know what, there aren't a lot of women uh, from, a, from a, a percentage standpoint. She works is what we like to call where I'm from up north. I come from a place in the world where a lot of folks um, don't necessarily find the jobs that they would like that would get them ahead in life. And so what they do is they get on a plane or they drive in a big old truck and they drive up north. They drive to remote locations. They work in oil and gas. They work in mining. They work in all sorts of forestry or construction uh, in big, big ways uh, on these massive projects that have to do with many of the natural resources. Um, you know, obviously for our for our friends in the States, uh, this rings true as well for people in mining or forestry or, um, you know, extreme agriculture, extreme construction. And, and these workers will literally leave their families for, you know, days, weeks at a time, uh, months at a time sometimes. And the gal that we're about to talk to is a safety officer in that world and she has seen um she has seen uh, problems that need solutions and she hasn't just complained about it, but she's actually developing a program and programs to help remote workers for the struggles that they go through. Rhonda Sachuk, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be part of HeCast today. Oh, thank you for having me, Mike. It's a real pleasure to be here. And thank you for allowing me to share my story. Oh, my God. No problem at all. Now, number one, did I nail the description? OK, was that all right? It was perfect. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, we love talking to people who want to change the world here. You know, we've got 60 some episodes in our uh, under our belt already and, and have talked to a lot of world changers. Um, I'll tell you this, as he changed, it was being developed. One of the things, one of the pain points that was identified very early and 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 some of the uh, feedback that we received instantly were from some of those folks who work up north or are remote workers. Um, it is a different life that people choose when they choose to do this, isn't it? Yes, it is. And, you know, it's funny because I grew up a pipeliner's daughter. Uh, uh -huh. My dad was, yeah, he was a heavy equipment operator for his entire life. And I grew up without him. I mean, there was some of my friends that didn't even know I had a dad. They were like, oh, my God, I thought your mom and dad was divorced. And I'm like, no, he's just away working. Wow. <laughs> and, and it was funny because back in that generation, we never saw him for months. They would be gone for an entire winter. And um, it's funny because when I told him that I wanted to go into the oil field and, and start a career, he uh, pretty much ejected out of his chair and he said, no daughter of mine is going to those damn camps. Okay, you, brought, so, you bring up two questions immediately with that response. Um, the first one is how was being uh, the daughter of a remote worker, now that you can kind of look back with some perspective, the perspective of adulthood, um, how did that affect you? That's the first question. Um, and second, um, 
why do you think his reaction was so so immediate and visceral? Like, why do you think he had that reaction? So those two, if you could, if you could speak to yeah, that. Yeah. Well, um, like my mom was a very strong, independent lady. She was uh, very handy at things, and you know, sometimes when he came home, there was a bit of a disrupt a disruption, right? So you know, you have a father figure that's not in the picture, and then all of a sudden he's home. They disrupt the schedule. You know, they got into a lot of arguments. It was it was my mom's tool shed now organized the way she wanted it you know and as far as him not wanting that life for me I mean back in those days it was pretty evident there was a lot of drinking and a lot of shenanigans I mean they were really salt of the earth individuals they worked hard they played hard and and right I one thing you did mention is that there was not a lot of women in the industry so it really was an old boys club generation and some of the men there did not even like the idea of women out there. So it was a so slippery he, slope. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he, uh, that was on the laundry list of things, reasons why he uh, didn't want you to do that. Um, you know, I, I can tell you this. So in my, my, my day job, the, you know, my career is in the financial service field and I, I, you know, I've got a couple hundred clients, um, and, you know, insurance investments, financial planning, that kind of thing. And I'll tell you, um, a segment of my client base are exactly what you were talking about. They're people who, this is the, um, this is the life they've chosen. This is how they've chosen to, 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 to go through life. And I'll, I'll tell you this, when the apple, start, apple cart gets upset sometimes, you know, these types of industries have uh, hot periods and slow periods, right? And during the slow periods, if, if a couple or a family is used to one of the members of that family uh, being gone, for three weeks, back for seven days, gone for three weeks or even longer. If something changes and suddenly that person is back in the household 100% of the time, let me tell you, um, I've, I've seen my share of people who don't survive that, couples who don't survive that from a family standpoint because the changes are so drastic to yes. when the person is in the house and not in the house. And it takes a, you know, it takes a strong family to, to live that life. Yes. And it, it's funny because one of my five core topics, uh, the last one was breakup. And I don't know if you're familiar with the term breakup is it's kind of when a project ends and everybody goes home. And uh, so I, I called it breakup and hopefully not your relationships when you get home. And I've heard so many of the oil field wives complain, you know, like as soon as he comes home, he throws a wrench into our schedule. The kids are acting out and then they're also sitting idle. So the spending starts. Absolutely. You know, and, um, you know, and I've also heard the oil field wives say, like, why does my eight year old have a twelve hundred dollar iPad? You know, and so I think they're trying to make up for the lost time in material possessions. They're like, oh, well, it's just going to we're going to buy a boat it's about 120,000 but let's just go and do this you know and then you're right we hit that slow period and then that lifestyle still has to be maintained and then you see the trouble start yeah and I mean we can do an entire uh podcast on on that from our perspectives uh uh, you know respectively um I don't want to make it about that I want to go into your program here soon but I will say that yeah that's exactly right it's it's almost like when I have an oil field family as clients it's almost one of two things number one it's um they're near the beginning of it where one of them they make a decision to do some sacrificing and go no 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 we're going to go catch up or we're going to get ourselves ahead and then we're going to get out and they have a, a specific plan and they do it temporarily to pay off debt to um you know to get themselves in that place where they get to to buy the house that they want or something like that to really catch themselves up they follow that plan and that's it or uh, the other one and the other one unfortunately is much more common to me when i sit down with them i look at them and it's like they're making you know good money when you look at compared to what middle-class money is. Um, But they're one or two payments away from bankruptcy a lot of the time because they get those toys. They get the sleds and the boats and the, and the motorbikes and the trailers and all of these things. And part of me thinks it's because the strain is so great on the family that they want to, like you said, kind of compensate for when they are home. And, and um, you know, it's, it's, that puts financial strain on. And then the moment, 
a breakup happens, right? Uh, the moment something in the industry changes, now it's, uh-oh, we're in crisis mode suddenly. And um, negotiating those things is a really, really tough thing. We have just scratched the surface in that example of how this remote working situation can uh, affect families. As a safety officer, um, as somebody who has grown up in this, you have seen a problem and you want to figure out a solution for that. What's that solution, Rhonda? Well, you know, all my years of being a safety, I feel like, you know, throwing procedures, policies and procedures down somebody's throat. These guys are already natural born risk takers. It takes a certain individual to be out there in the first place, right? So when you you come across with these corporate policies and stuff, they're not listening. So that's where I found myself being more of a mentor. So when I'm investigating an incident, I want to, my first question is, hey, buddy, how are things at home? How are, how are you doing? Like, how are you coping being on the road? You, you know, and everybody's, you know, we have these labor laws that say that you're only allowed to work a certain amount of days and whatnot, but that's just not, it's not true. We break yeah, through. that goes out the window. The overtime pay up there is nuts. Yes. You know, so the first thing I'll look at is like, how many days have you been working? And, you know, and my longest stint in camp without seeing the city lights is 96 days. Holy you shit. Know, and some of these guys have completely like blew that one right out of the water. So, Man. you know, it, it is a struggle. So I always want to uh, ask them, like, how are you today? Is there something going on in the home front? Because if there's something going on in the home front, they're not going to care about a policy and procedure. Like, let's get to the heart of the matter here, you know. I got to ask you uh, about that because one of the things that uh, that he changed it is all about is is um, getting creating a space where men can can kind of take the armor off. Yeah, you know, we use uh, uh, we're using the words death because it comes up every friggin' podcast we do, but it's it's vulnerability. It's being able to actually take the armor off. Now, if I'm a if I'm an employee that doesn't enjoy, you know, I just kind of sign on the dotted line. I, I, yeah, I understand the procedures and I'm just, I just want to work. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm in that place where I've got that armor on. Uh, What is the typical response when you as a safety officer actually ask them human questions like that? Like do most of them open up right away? Do some of them, does it take some digging to get there? Um, do most of them not open up? What's, what's the response to that? Well, I've had an amazing ability to have those conversations and that's why I'm branching out into this project because yes, I've had the amazing ability to bring that out in them and they do open up. They open up immediately and and then I find out a little bit more about them and what's happening at home and these men are struggling. They are struggling behind closed doors yeah. and there's a stigma attached to mental health Um, the old boys club, they were told that, you know, suck it up, man up. And you're right. I want them to take the armor off. I want to provide a safe space where they can to talk to somebody. And actually the mining industry, they have regular maintenance programs where somebody does actually come in and talk about suicide awareness, mental health. And then they have a 45 minute crew talk. And when they do those types of um, interventions, I want to call it almost. Yeah. Um, all of a sudden, employees are using the family assistance programs tenfold. So, you know, and a lot of the times these men don't even know that these programs are there for them. Yeah. So well, it's it's one of those things where we put the blinders on until, uh, you know, until the brakes go. And then we yeah. really realize that there's a problem, and and um, we we see a lot of uh, a lot of that in the people that we talk to, and it's interesting hearing your perspective on that. Um, so you saw a problem. I want to go back to to sum up what it is that you're doing exactly, what the program that you're developing right now. What is it called? Um, who is it for? And what is um, the expected or the desired outcome of it? Okay. Well, I have a safety company called Enduro Safety. And my my project is going to be a bit of a spinoff from Enduro Productions. Yep. And I'm going to hit five core topics. And I'm going to hit those ones specifically because that's the ones that I have uh, per, like experienced personally and have observed in all the workers. The first one is fear of abandonment. The the separation anxiety, which can cause feelings of jealousy, anger, loneliness. The second one is loneliness and isolation. 
and social anxiety because you got to think, you know, you, you take somebody that may have social anxiety issues and now you put them in a camp with 2,500 people and a culture that is like fit in or fuck off. Yep. And that is a, a coin term out there, FIFO. So it can be terrifying for some of these new young workers too. Hold on a second. Fit in or fuck off. Fit in or fuck off. That so, is a so, coin term. <laughs> so now does fitting in ever challenge uh, certain individuals uh, moral code or their individual, uh, uh, you know, core beliefs that they've grown up with? Absolutely. I mean, there is a lot of um, coin terms out there, such as snatch in the patch. Oh, yeah, that's a real favorite one of mine. Uh, Pipeline mafia. Uh, And the one that's coined mostly that you'll actually see embroidered on different like logos and stuff, hats and hoodies is H.A.F., which means hard as fuck. (laughs) So you get that are new to the industry and now they're faced with like a pipeline mafia it's terrifying for people and it's also really terrifying if people need to report unsafe conditions too because you know you got snitches get stitches you know it's terrifying for some it's it's it's, i i hate to make this analogy because i you know again it's not that it's all bad but at the same time the bad needs to be fixed and so uh you know it almost sounds in those respects it almost sounds like prison it, it can be yes i mean and that's funny that well, part you of a gang <laughs> yeah 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 for sure and and then see and that's the problem with the mental health health issues right these men are are told to be tough you know hard as fuck and we don't talk about our feelings but then all of a sudden now you hear about the drugs and the alcohol and the suffering behind closed doors and yep. they're on their second and third divorce and you know so we need to talk about this You know, and yes, we may, you know, and that's the problem with the corporate world, the ivory tower with their policies and procedures. These two groups are not talking the same language. Yeah, they're not compatible in that regard. And that's where I want to bridge the gap. I want to bridge the gap and talk to the people in the field at their level. I speak their language. I'm one of those people. I am hard as fuck. Like, you know, it (laughs) takes like, you know, because I'm not a corporate safety, I'm in the field. So I've stayed in the camps. I'm in the 45 below zero temperatures and and whatnot. So I've been there. I've lived it. I uh, I want to get to the other three um, points that you want to yes. cover, but you used a phrase earlier that's that's really important to to us. That he changed it, especially um, you use the, the the phrase "man up," and you use it in the context of hey, you got to man up, you got to be part of this, you know, you got to you know fit in, fuck off, that kind of a thing. Um, one thing that we're trying to do here is we actually and we're ambitious, like we think we're 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 shooting, we're thinking big, we're mm-hmm. shooting for the moon and the stars and beyond. We want to take back in the culture. We literally want to take back the phrase man up and we want to change the definition of it. You know, you got all these movements that are taking back phrases um, that have a negative connotation to them, making it good. We're taking back the phrase man up and what we want manning up to be is exactly what you're fucking talking about. Mm -hmm. It's, it's recognizing that everything isn't good. um, And, 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 and literally taking responsibility for that. Right. And let's move towards finding solutions to make things better. That's what manning up should be. And in this culture of 2021, um, I, I believe that the culture is moving to a place that demands that. The mm-hmm. problem is, how do we do that? And that's where he changed it, sees um, the hole in the market. You clearly see the hole in your industry that you can go and you can fill. And um, that's really exciting. I'm already excited. You've told us two out of the five. I'm really excited about that. What are the other three? The three are drugs and alcohol and peer pressure, because with that HAF culture, there's a lot of peer pressure and peer pressure could lead to unsafe acts. And also with the drugs and the alcohol fit in or fuck off. Right. Right. And And that's a, that's a huge problem where, uh, It's a huge, and we're not just talking, you know, uh, you know, 15, 20 beers too many, although that is a problem too. It it gets into some really hard stuff. Oh, absolutely. The cocaine, the drug, the hard drugs. I mean, it's no, it's no secret, right? And everybody always asks me, well, aren't you guys drug tested? Oh my God. Yes, of course. You know, yeah, we're drug tested. (laughs) Yeah. 
But what does that exactly mean, right? A lot of that to me is the corporate companies wiping their hands of it. They're like, okay, we're covered. Bingo. You know, it's not a liability because now we've tested everybody. But How about we change the culture instead? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, um, and the fourth one, which I think is really important for a lot of supervisors, yep. people who are in a, a leadership role, is work-life balance. Hmm. Uh, oh, my God. They do, like, if you've ever been around a pipeline superintendent, their radio, their phone, their emails are 24-7. I don't even know where those guys sleep. Like, right. Yes. I mean, they're up at four thirty, five o'clock. They're up at the ridiculous hours, sending reports and talking to Calgary. Yep. And um, yeah, there's and then it's really hard on the relationships. Super hard because now they have kids or loved ones at home that demand their attention and they're buried in their phones. You can't even get a uh-huh out of them. Barely. You know, um, this is where I think everything that you're talking about here, while you are developing a program that's specific to uh, to remote workers um, of all sorts, you know, blue collars, roughnecks, whatever you want to call them, um, the, the, every single thing you're talking about here is universal. And I think about work-life balance. Like I'm in the, like I say, I'm in the financial world and I see guys who are that what you just described those supervisors and that's when they're living here living at home with their families i think that many people unfortunately to get ahead are are given that um not just green light but that push a a kick in the ass to let their rest of their life go out of balance and and balance i think you know one thing I'm, i'm i'm grateful for for the pandemic uh, you know, depending on the region of the listener, uh, you know, it, the, it may vary as to what your experience is. But where we're from, there's been a lot of, of, of lockdown, shutdown, slowdown. And that slowdown has really caused some people, um, and not without struggles sometimes, but to get back into balance. It's almost been a forced thing. And um, I think we all need that. We all need to take a look to stop, you know, letting the autopilot go and just and, and, and actually stop and take a look at our life and ask that question. Are we in balance or are we not in balance? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, with the work life balance, I'm really passionate about that subject because I don't think like the home front does understand the responsibilities that these guys do carry. But I'm not too sure if they really know the extent of it. I mean, there's multi million dollar contracts at stake and deadlines and schedules that have zero room for error. Yes, and yes. Um, and there's a lot of bodies that are in that mix, right? Like, yes. uh, you know, like the oil companies, the clients and whatnot. Yep. And, you know, and I just want to teach people even on the home front, like how to even have a long distance relationship, yeah. how to, how to set healthy boundaries so that they're not having to answer tests like, hey, how are you? What, it, what are you doing? How are you? You know, what are you doing? And, you know, like they're busy building a gas plant. That's what they're doing, you know. And and I think now with Wi-Fi and WhatsApp and FaceTime, like, like it's a beautiful thing, but it also can be a curse. Sure. Because now these guys are obligated to answer these uh, messages constantly. And it's just they burn out. I see it all the time. They're drained. They're exhausted. And then the home front feels neglected and not listened to. And then the worker doesn't feel appreciated. And there's there just has to be some sort of common ba- uh, boundary and setting healthy boundaries, even in just communication while you're away. Um, I'm, I, the hope that I'm getting at it now, I mean, I'm, I am an eternal optimist um, and, and I'm unabashed, but sometimes it pisses people off because it's so much. But I, I, I look for the silver lining wherever. And I've seen a couple silver linings in what we've talked about here. The first one um, is something that you said earlier. It, it's that when you have these scrum sessions where, where, where guys are kind of talked to about these programs and things, and I imagine that because of the fitting in thing that you might not get a lot of guys putting their hands up right during that session. But you said that they use the programs, that the program percentages go way up after you have these scrum sessions and things. That gives me hope. Yes. Uh, The second thing is that we got people like you who are who are also recognizing this and saying, okay, we need to make a change and we need to create more of these tools. We need to make this conversation louder and we need to recognize that we do live in a new world where uh, before it might have been. Yeah. You know, you know, 15 years ago, I can imagine um, it would have been like, okay, 
dad or, or maybe mom, but mostly dad uh, or hubby or whatever boyfriend is going to this camp and they're going to talk to you every three days or so because that's when the opportunity will will arise for that to happen. Now we live in an instantaneous connectivity world. Yes. And and for all the good that it does bring us, it also brings us, uh, there's a double-edged sword there. Yes. And just hearing you as a safety officer recognize this, um, I get a lot of hope out of that too. Yes. And you know, and the thing is, our days are really long. Like as soon as our feet hit the floor, we're running. You know, you're you're getting into the kitchen, you're packing your lunch, getting your breakfast. Now you got a, you know, like a 40 kilometer treacherous trip to the job site. Yeah. You know, like these guys can't be on their phones constantly, you know, and then once they get to the work, it's like they're full dead on a dead run, you know, and then we're talking about 12 to 13, 14 hour days. Yep. You know, and now they're glued to their phones all night. And and even on days off, too, like I noticed, like I personally observed guys coming back from days off. Yep. I mean, whoever thought a six in one was a good idea, you know, yeah. you know, like these guys sometimes don't even make it home. And then we have other schedules like a 24 and four. Two of those days are travel. So they rush home. They're home for two days. Yep. The kids are demanding their attention. Yep. The yep. wife has a honey do to do list that's as long as her arm. Yep. And these guys come back to work and they are physically, mentally drained. Yeah. Yeah. And it and now now it becomes a safety issue, a safety hazard. Because right. these guys are not in the game. They're not in the game. And they're still talking to their loved ones at home because, you know, little Johnny took a spill and needs a Band-Aid on his knee. Yeah. Well, you know, what What should be communicated and what should not? Like, that's what I mean about the healthy boundaries. Do we always need to be texting? Do we always need to be FaceTiming? You know, and so it does, you need to set some boundaries. Um, and what's number five? Uh, would have been the breakup. Hopefully not your relationships when you get home. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're yeah. going full circle. You know That's it's right. No, yeah. No, but it's funny that you say with the financial advisor, because yeah. I was wanting to bring a financial advisor on part of the team to collaborate with because guys do need some direction when it comes to saving and investing. Uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely talk about that off camera. Cause I, I have a lot that I could definitely say just even anecdotally that uh, uh, from my perspective, I think uh, I could probably say some things that would, that would be helpful. Um, you know, and, and the big one when it comes to mentality is um, that, you know, not just from a financial standpoint, from a broader standpoint too, uh, people many times think it's never going to end. It's always going to be like this, you know, um, and, and from the financial standpoint, it might be the paychecks are always going to come in, but it might also be that uh, emotionally they think, oh, the, the, the schedule is always going to be this way. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's not the case at all. So dealing with change, I imagine, um, is something that, that would be built into this program um, probably through all the steps now that I think about it. Yes. You know, and I'm glad that you mentioned that, Mike, the change, because we're always in transition. You know, you get you get that call to go to work. And a lot of those calls, they're exactly like this. When do you need me? Oh, I needed you yesterday. Yeah. You yeah know? The urgency is instant. Oh, yeah. So now you're packing your vehicle and you're gone. Yeah. You know? And um, I never got over that feeling. It was always that knot in my stomach that, oh, my God, I got to leave home. I got to leave everything that I know. If yeah. you are in a relationship, it just causes so much anxiety because of the fear of the unknown. Is yeah. this person going to wait for me? Is this person going to be there when I get back? I can't imagine the stress. Well, I do because I experienced some of it, right? But leaving kids behind, you yeah. know? The kids don't understand it. They're crying. They're like, why is my dad leaving? And it's really hard on a guy, you know, and then they get back to their job site and they, you know, they integrate back into their work life and they have their work family. Yeah. You know, and then they get attached to those people too. So now the job is done and now you're leaving all your friends and everything that you've known for the past six months and, and then going back into home life. It's just constant transition. And I've heard, I've overheard some really funny conversations too about guys coming back home and they're like, yep, I had to reclaim my side of the bed. The little one was in it and the, and the family dog. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like they I, uh, they I, I was just going to say, I can't imagine uh, when you talk about fitting in or fucking off, I can't imagine that fitting in includes, um, you know, having heart to heart conversations about how they left their one year old at home and they're heartbroken about it. 
Yes. Exactly. But that's what we want to create, though. We want to create that culture. Absolutely. Where, where if they have this um, out of town family, that they talk about this shit, that they actually, you know, can help each other with that um, and deal with that and be a positive, um, a positive role model for each other and support yeah. structure for each other. Absolutely. And that's why, too, I want to give a shout out to Nick Gemmel. He yes. has the Pipe Dream podcast that um, I really feel like you should connect. It's and called Pipe he- Dream. Pipe dream. Yeah. Pipe dream. <laughs> and he actually is an oil field worker and he also recognized the need for these programs. And he put a program together. It's a 90 day accountability program and it's called when coming home matters. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Let, let, let's, let's connect that. Let's, yeah. uh, let's get materials. Let's get that. We'll, we'll promote it within. He changed it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And- yeah. yeah, and, and, and also, now your, your program, how close are you to being done this thing, Rhonda? Because I, 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 from what I'm seeing, um, the desperation need for this yeah. is extreme. And are you going to be able to roll this thing out to all sorts of different, um, you know, blue collar outfits that, that employ this model? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I'm going to be a, like, what my, I really want to specialize in workshops. So I want to be that person that comes in for like a, a half day or a full day training workshop, uh, lunch and learn or something like that. And also coaching as well. So coaching and workshops, because I know for sure, I know for a fact that the oil companies do have budgets where they bring in trainers and speakers. Yep. So that's where I want, and I will have this ready by the fall. I want to do the last quarter and then roll it out then. Okay. So what's the program called? Enduro Productions. Enduro Productions. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't want to finish up quite yet. I know we are, I told you it was going to go by fast and we're already kind of heading yeah. uh, towards the close. I don't want to be there yet, but right now I want to take this time. Um, what are the best ways for people who are hearing this, whether they or they have a loved one um, who who is a remote worker or one of these long-term, you know, blue collar type, type situations, um, what's the best way for them to follow you and to uh, connect with you? Well, I have a LinkedIn page, which is under Rhonda Sawchuk. Okay. And I also have an Instagram page where it is Enduro Productions. Okay. Can you spell the Enduro? Yeah, it's Enduro. It's E-N-D-U-R-O, yep. which is kind of like the Enduro bike, on-road, like, off-road. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say it's like and a that's motorbike. that's where it started was on-road, off-road safety. So that's where I come up with the Enduro. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, okay, so now I got to ask a question because because I've heard this before. Uh, from now, I haven't heard it as much recently, which gives me hope. It makes me feel like the culture might be changing. As a safety officer in one of these outfits, do you still have the guy out there who? Um, how can I put this? Uh, is distrustful, disdainful, um, doesn't want you around because of the of the delays that get caused. Oh, the fucking safety person's here. Now we got to be safe, uh, which means we're going to be less productive. Um, is that still a culture out there or is that fading out? Oh, it is definitely still a culture out there. And, you know, and sometimes the client too is a bit of a bully too. I might get roasted for saying that, but, you know, when it comes to time and money, de- deadlines and schedules, yeah. You know, safety can kind of take a back seat sometimes. They would like it can to be a pain in the back. ass, is what you're yeah. saying. To and them. you know, and um, I've always been taught though, pick your battles wisely. Okay. And you know, and the thing is, you don't want to shove safety down anybody's throat because I'm a rebel by heart as well, and I don't want to be told what to do. So that's where I get the mentoring process. You know, you gotta sell it to them. You have to understand, like you know, these guys are risk takers, you know, they got a job to do, but I started in the old, old boys generation. So right. it was tough being a woman, but now, and also one of my talk topics is ageism because you've got the old, the old boys club and then you got the millennials now. Right. And they Absolutely. don't really eye to eye, eye sometimes. So you definitely have a couple different target audiences there as far as culture. <laughs> I gotta say, um, you have a very, very interesting skill set, and and uh, like like the idea of okay, yeah, you grew up with uh, with a dad who was a, a remote worker. You yourself went into it. You went in on the safety side, which again polarizing for the reasons you just mentioned. But then throw in the friggin' skill of life coach and mentor um, as well. That is a very interesting mix of uh, of perspective that you have. 
thank you. I really appreciate that. And uh, but I uh, but it's from the heart. I truly believe that if people have a little bit more guidance, you know, some more advice, some yeah. some resources to fall on, the layers are going to start coming off. You know, like you said, the armor. And then, you know, at the end of the day, we're all human beings. We all have feelings. We all hurt. We all have trauma, yep. you know, and, and it's just time to talk about these things now, even if it is behind a closed door and they don't want to get into the brotherhood of it. But that's where I want to make, you know, resources available. And, you know, I think that He Changed It is an amazing resource. I think guys need to know that it is okay to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so good on you guys too. I love it. Well, I appreciate that. I think we're all we're all uh, we're all attacking the same piece of fruit. We're just doing it from the different side, you know. And, yes, and we're going to get that yeah. sucker peeled off and 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 uh, and working right. Um, for your for your life coaching type stuff, your mentor stuff. Who are some of your mentors? What are some like right now? I mean, Enduro is is on its way. Uh, we're going to be ready by the fall of 2021, and we will do our best to help you promote that and be a part of that as much as we can. We'll have you on here again, obviously. Um, but um, in, now, in the meantime, you've got some personal development training. What are some for 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 guys that might be listening to this right now, and maybe they want to take that first. Uh, careful step. Do you have any books that you'd recommend? Any programs you'd recommend? Any uh, insights for that? Well, I would definitely recommend Nick Gemmel's co- uh, program. Yep. And um, my mentors, like I've actually signed up with many coaches in the last few years. So I've been to coaching. My coaches have coaches. But as far as like mentors and stuff, I'm a huge follower of a lot of the motivational speakers, the gurus like Ed Milet. And I've actually, I am a certified Jack Canfield train the trainer. There you go. His success principles are amazing. They are, they are life changing. And the very first principle in his book is taking 100% responsible responsibility of your life through the good and the bad. You know, success leaves clues and you've got mentors all over the place that uh, preach uh, the same thing from a different angle. Again, for me, um, the subtle art of not giving a fuck, Mark Manson, it talks about that. You know, there's a chapter in that book. Everything is your response. Not everything is your fault, but everything is your responsibility. Absolutely. You know, yes, and, I, and I really like some of the more uh, the military guys too, like Jocko Wilkins and oh, yeah. uh, David Goggins. I mean, Goggins is amazing. Yeah. yeah. When I go on hikes with my friend, Sam, she's like, have you been listening to Do- David Goggins again? <laughs> <laughs> that guy's hardcore. Yeah, yeah. He's but, you hardcore know, but, for the hardcore. That guy is. Uh, but, but they're 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 so manly. And I wish that more of these guys would actually listen to some of those podcasts and motivational yeah. videos. Right. It gets you really pumped up. And and uh, those guys have been through a lot of hardships, a lot Definitely. of hardships, you know, and then they've rose. They've rose above it. So. <laughs> I, uh, God, we could do this all day. Um, we are, we are right at the place right now where we're going to have to move towards the close or move to the close. I guess I were to say, um, in closing here, if, if, if a guy who is listening to this right now is feeling the pressure, and I mean, the pressure could be from any of the angles we talked about, either the pressure for home, um, the pressure to fit in. Maybe they're in the process of fitting in and they don't like the person that they're becoming because of that. Right. And they're hearing this and maybe they're living that quiet life of desperation that the the philosophers talk about that, that many men live. Um, what advice would you have for them right now as a next step? You know what? Reach out. The resources are there. I mean, all you really have to do is get on social media and um, type in mental health awareness. Yep. And I mean, the resources now are are plenty. So you just got to resonate with somebody. Just, you know, find somebody, talk. You know, there's a lot of resources now through the family assistance programs. Yep. Use them. But the thing is, a lot of guys don't know that they're there. Um, I appreciate hearing that. Would you please throw out your LinkedIn and your Insta again, in case there's somebody who wants to say, you know what? I really like what this Rhonda gal is saying. I, 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 I trust what she's saying and maybe she can help me, help me a little bit here. What's your, uh, what's your handle? What's the best yeah. way to get you? And I actually really do encourage anybody listening, even if it's the family on the home front, do reach out to me that this is why I'm doing it. So on LinkedIn, it's Rhonda Sawchuk, R-H-O-N-D-A Sawchuk. And uh, the Instagram is Enduro Productions. 
That's amazing. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day as you're uh, as you're you're doing your day job and then you're 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 building your uh, your movement here. Thank you for taking time out to be part of this. You've got a friend and he changed it. I know that you and the team are going to, you know, have, have all the, the socials exchanged and we're going to share everything uh, for each other and, and, and get it out there as much as we can. Uh, but thank you again for wanting to for wanting to change the world. I, I, again, we, I, we finished where we started and, and I think people might have a better idea now of how you're actually doing that. You are somebody that doesn't just focus on the problem. You're focusing on the solution. Uh, Rhonda, thank you so, so much for what you're doing. No, thank you for having me as a guest. I really appreciate it. And I believe in what you're doing as well. So we we'll make two of us. <laughs> iron sharpens iron, my friend. Yes. Um, that's it. They go by so fast. That's another episode. I am uh, grateful to be doing this. I'm sad that the episode is over, but at the end of the day, we're all moving towards a better goal. So uh, if you haven't downloaded, he changed it yet. What are you waiting for? Go get it right now. It's in the app stores, both the Google and the uh, Apple stores. Uh, share He Changed It. Share He Cast and uh, share Enduro Productions. Thank you very much for taking time out of your day to invite me into your ear holes uh, or your eye sockets. I appreciate everybody who is part of this already and uh, the people who are yet to be part of this. Uh, welcome. Um, my name is Mike Chisholm. This is He Cast, the official podcast of He Changed It. Go change something.